<laughs> Hi painters and welcome to a new video of my basic painting techniques in which we're going to see the stippling technique. It is one of my favorite techniques and I use it constantly to illuminate and create textured surfaces simultaneously. I consider that with the right information and a little practice it is relatively easy to learn to handle and master. Let's see what the general mechanics of the technique are. We already know that, like the dry brush, the paint we should use barely contain water and the brush must be properly downloaded before starting. To deposit the paint, instead of making a conventional brush stroke, we will give light touches with the tip of the brush, that is, we will peck or dot the surface. In the early stages of highlight, I use either dark or harmonic colors for the base tone, that is, they are of very similar tones to each other, so that the effect of each color layer is not very aggressive over the others. For this reason, I can also use broad brush strokes and take relatively little care, since the objective in these early stages is to create a well-defined base of color and texture, but still without excessive detail. You can see how the tip of the brush is open to cover this area and create a mark of irregular paint with each tap. In the following steps of the highlight, as I add a lighter or more vivid tones, I redo the stippling with a smaller controlled brush stroke. This is for two reasons. Progressively, later colored spots are much more visible and evident, and they must already be deposited with a clear objective. Each layer occupies a smaller surface than the previous, and in order to adjust the adequate amount of paint in that area, we need the precision of a fine tip. Finally, mention that the main function of these steps is to highlight and well define the volumes of the model sculpture. That is, make the shapes that we want to highlight well visible, exactly as if we were highlighting using blending, for example. I'm going to paint a red piece of armor from a female, and by using the stippling I am going to create a feeling of a very warm and old material. Starting from a dark brown tone, I make a first general highlight with Evil Star Scarlet, from Game Workshop, practically with no dilution. At the top left, there will be at all times a guide with the colors and the approximate amount of each, including dilution. As I said at the beginning, in this first step I cover almost the entire surface of the armor. The maximum shade is remain unaffected, since both by the density and the loading of the paint and by the type of the brush stroke, the brush never gets to deposit paint in the deepest dressing. I always give a couple of coats with each mix of color tone, so now I repeat the same operation, stippling with red all over the same areas again. When making this highlight by stippling, both layers of red will create it a very appreciable texture, since each brush stroke that we apply leaves a different mark to the others and making the sum of those two layers already very effective of its own, on its own. In this video, I have preferred not to accelerate the images as in other previous ones, because I find it interesting that you can see the whole processes at its normal speed, and that you appreciate all the details well, and also hear the great background music. In this enormous photograph, you can see the result of this first highlight step. Again, I prefer you to see the images as in much detail as possible, to appreciate the shape and the places of the brush stroke. Now, we go to the second highlight, where I add a small amount of sun skin to the red. This color gives me enough white to illuminate and some yellow and some red to balance the color well, preventing it from becoming too pinky very sun. Thank you. 
already here I began to use, as you can see, a smaller and pointy brush. And I use each brush stroke not to only create more texture, but also to make a good differentiation between the areas of more light and those of more shade. It is the same function of a blending, but done with a different tool and protocol. The task of creating layers of more light is done in two ways. Spacing the points less and less. In the shadier areas, the points were quite separated from each other. Superimposing two or three layers consecutively, so that I reinforce the light in the areas that I choose. Although the color tends to be less red and more pinkish, I'm not concerned, since my goal now is to create contrast and texture. The red tone will be recovered in the shading steps. In the image, remember that it's at least 7 inch times bigger than the miniature, but the texture, the contrast and the light are already very noticeable. third stage of highlight and now I increase the amount of sun skin in the mix. Also, in my scene small, 30% is clear enough to have very marked lights wherever the pine is deposited. So again, I am very careful when stippling and again I use a very sharp brush. At this stage, I am constantly changing the areas where I paint and I insist over and over again on the areas of highest illumination, such as the upper areas of the, and the upper parts of the armor plates. Again, I don't want to accelerate the image so that you see the entire step clearly. You can also see how much I change the position of the miniature in the hand to be able to make the stippling in the appropriate area in a comfortable and safe way without excessively staining areas around. This is the longest and perhaps the most complicated step to carry out since with the same paint mix I'm definitively defining the main volumes of light and shadow. Also, we can lose insight of the fact that we cannot totally cover the texture of the layers lower. We need a balance between what we cover with paint and in what way we do it and what we left visible.
in the final picture, both the volumes and the contrast, and of course the texture, it's very marked and evident. In fact, that aggressiveness is very necessary now, because when shading we will lower it a lot. We now get to the last highlight step, where I add ivory to the previous mix, and where almost half of it contains a lot of white. In fact, this step could be called the final or maximum light. In this part of the video, it's very interesting that you look at the areas where I deposit the paint and how much, since I am forcing the light in those areas. I also put small points of light in the more shaded areas, but widely spaced from each other. Its function is to reinforce the feeling of texture in those parts. And here, our great little photographic summary of the process, in which I have included some of the lightning work, to well define the plates and separate them. The whole process that we have seen is the one that corresponded to the stippling technique itself. But it's a process that is incomplete, that doesn't work at all if we do not complete it with shadows, which I carry out by washes and glazes. These shades also contribute to greatly soften the aggressive texturing that we have created. That will be the central theme of a future video, but now I'm going to advance this process here, simply to be able to appreciate the final result that is obtained with the entire stippling process. Firstly, I'm using glazes with the initial red tone, to recover that color which was partially lost during highlighting. The paint is highly diluted and I use several layers moving from most of the paint to the shadow area. Remember the video of the brush movement. The second step of shading, once the red tone has been recovered, is shading for real. To do this, I again apply several layers of soft glazes, moving most of the paint into the shadow area again, but this time I use diluted purple paint. And white purple. It is a color that, on the one hand, contains red, so will blend well with the main tone of the armor. And on the other hand, it has blue, which will give us depth and coldness to the shadows, and a good contrast between primary colors, blue and red. This image corresponds to the appearance of the armor after applying several glazes with the original red tone, where the texture is smoothed and the color is recovered. In this other image, the shading using purple accentuates the contrast and contributes to softening the texture. In addition, I have made the final outlining to define the plates as much as possible. And until here today, this is the longest video I have made so far. I think it shows in detail the stippling process from the beginning to the end, although I imagine that in the future there will be more demonstrations of this technique. I say goodbye as always, reminding you that if you subscribe to the channel and share the videos, it will be easier for me to continue bringing even more complete material. See ya!